anything is possible. I love the spirit of that. I love the spirit of that. I don't believe it's true. Anything is possible, cool, go bench press 10,000 pounds or 100,000 pounds. But what I think is actually more effective is really to go and say, like, to tell the truth to ourselves, to, like, actually know our limits, like, to truly know our limits. And to truly know our limits, we have to go and test those limits. Without that, it's just an assumption. The first time, actually, on Kilimanjaro, what I thought was I found myself on the fourth night in the trip, and I was completely physically broken. Bear crawling for six to seven hours a day, and my arms were swelling up, my feet the pain gotten to be really intense and I thought like I'm done. It's only four days we projected that was going to take us 15 days to reach the summit. I thought that next morning I'm going to get up and I'm going to go in helicopter out. On Aconcagua is the same day and the fourth day and this, this day in particular you see in this photo it was like close to a thousand pull-ups through these ice fields called penitentes and you got to the top of this thing it was a scree field where I'm just sliding down like faster than then I could go and climb, and all of a sudden I get to the top of the scree field, I was physically more exhausted than I'd ever been, and my guide yells, rock, and watermelon-sized boulder releases, goes by a foot away from my head as I dove under a rock. You know, I'm questioning that night too, I was in the tent, just laying there crying, thinking like, why am I here? When I was born, my parents had no idea I was going to be born with a disability. It was a very sudden thing. The ultrasound technology was a lot different. They had normal checkups, normal ultrasounds, normal pregnancy, normal first birth up until I was born. And then in those first couple of days, the conversations were, were kind of grim. You know, it's you're going to have to probably take care of Kyle with everything. You're going to have to feed him and clothe him and dress him. You're never going to really be able to do much of anything on his own. It's kind of what their prognosis was. My grandparents just within hours after I was born. They were in Fort Wayne, Indiana and hopped in the car, drove to DC. And my grandma told my mom, she said, you know, if you can just look at his face and look at his smile, see his eyes, you know that everything was going to be okay. You know, the advice that they got was to just continue on. It was not a genetic thing. They ruled that out. So um, to have, have my three sisters, Amber, Lindsay, and Mackenzie, were born after me. And their attitude was really the same with, um, with all of us. You know, it was just to, you know, really to treat us the same and to set the bar to a level that, you know, they knew that we'd have to reach for that was attainable, but we'd have to go and reach for it. So even something as simple as, as picking up a spoon or a fork and using that to go and scoop up the food. I used to use a prosthetic spoon. I'd go and drop it over and over and over again, just hundreds of times, you know, and thousands of times spilling food all over the ground. And, eventually was able to go and figure it out even without the prosthetic. Even as something as simple as like putting on the sock. The first 10 times I put on my socks, you know, there's a massive learning curve there. The next 100 or the next 1,000, the next 10,000, obviously I'm getting a much diminished return. But I do know that just like the sock or whatever else, if we go and stick it out long enough, if we go and like actually commit ourselves to it, that it, it just eventually we'll get to the other side. It was our last day, wake up at 6 a.m. We had to hit the summit by 4 p.m. or we had to go and like turn around at nearly 23,000 feet. The summit was, <laughs> it was in, like in sight. I wasn't moving fast enough and I had a moment of just feeling sorry for myself and thinking like, we've been here for 17 days. I'm not gonna go and make this now. I'm gonna be literally 100 meters from the summit. It was a moment of this like surrender. My guide, Nani, was behind me. He was just like yelling at me, encouraging me. He was like, up, Kyle, up, up, keep climbing, keep climbing, Kyle, up. So then it was, you know, at that point, it was like, I see my friends like hitting the summit and I'm thinking like, been here for 17 days. Like I'm, you know, gonna go and waste this, not gonna go and make it. And I was like, you know what? This is a stupid thought. Like no amount of thinking about this or whatever, wanting to be on the summit or imagining how far we come, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is right here. It was literally just, it was turned into a game. It was what I could see in my ski goggles. So with my head down is what I could see in my ski goggles. I was like, that's the only 
three feet that I have to deal with right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and there's another three feet to go and deal with. And another three feet. And all of a sudden, my guide, about an hour and 15 minutes later, he tells me to stop and look up. And I'm 15 minutes away from the summit. And a couple of minutes later, I'm staying at the roof of South America with some of my best friends. And it was an amazing moment. For me, being born the way that it was, it never would have changed. No matter how much I wanted to go and change that, like it never would have changed. There's so many other things that could be influenced. So many other areas that are going to be more resourceful to go and put my mindset. I don't know what your disability is, what your challenges are, what your excuses are. It doesn't matter. There's never been an excuse that we've ever uttered that's gotten us any closer to where we want to go with our lives. And it's not about taking on 50 things at once. It's about taking on maybe like one or two. And how differently could, you, could all of our lives here if we actually got in action and did something about that. But it's to find your mountain, find your why, your truth. And realize after that, we could know our limits, but never, ever stop trying to break them. Thank <laughs> you.